I'm Bill O'Donnell, and welcome to another program on spirituality. Uh, today in the studio, I'm happy to welcome back uh, my old friend Joanne Dupont Sandoval, who has been here numerous times in the past as she teaches at the Institute for Spirituality at the College of Santa Fe uh, almost every summer, it seems like, and it's been a joy to have you. So welcome back, Joanne. Thank you. It's a joy to be here. Uh, it's great uh, to have you. Um, for those of you who have not had the pleasure of being in the classroom with uh, Dr. Joanne Dupont Sandoval, uh, who has her PhD in Biblical Studies, right? Yes. And has taught for 30 years. She was a member of the Franciscan Order and uh, has taught all over at, at every level. And I have had the pleasure of being in her classes any number of times. So welcome, Joanne. Thank you. So Joanne's here again to talk about uh, some programs that will be happening this summer at the Institute for Spirituality at the College of Santa Fe in Santa Fe, New Mexico. And uh, this year we're going to be doing Women in Scripture. Sounds very exciting. Yes, I'm looking forward to doing it. Um, in some ways it's a spin-off from the class that I did last summer on uh, Mary in the Scriptures. Oh. And uh, so this summer we'll be doing I gotta tell you, as much as I love Our Lady, I thought five days of Mary. What are we gonna? Gee, you know. And but I have to tell you, I was never bored for a second, and uh, I just really appreciate it. There was so much to really get into, and it, it's not like you're studying a, a subject really. It's more of bringing it into you. It seems like to me more than just reading a book for whatever the content is. In this studies, they actually they actually go in you, don't they? At least that's that, was, right. that was my experience. Oh, that's great. That's wonderful that that yeah. was your experience because that's what's what I aim for when I when I uh, lead these classes. Yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell us again, why did you choose Women in Scripture this year? Okay. Uh, one of the reasons is that there seemed to be some interest in looking at women in addition to Mary, looking at some of the other Marys in Scripture, looking mm -hmm. at some of the Old Testament women as well as some of the other New Testament women. And uh, it's also an area that I've been very interested in for many years. I did my dissertation years ago on uh, women and the concept of holiness in the Holiness Code in the book of Leviticus. And so that got me started looking at women more broadly in, in uh, scripture and in church history. Right. And in the last year or so, there's never, I can't recall uh, all the hubbub about uh, the Da Vinci Code, mm -hmm. all about uh, purportedly about Mary and Mary Magdalene and this sort of thing, and it really got people's interest, didn't it? It did. It captured people's interest in a way that uh, I don't know many, you know, just many other books and and uh, videos or whatever uh, simply haven't captured people's interest that way. And uh, yeah. so, uh, you know, maybe folks who've read the Da Vinci Code will be interested in looking at what do the scriptures actually say about Mary. That's true, because uh, even the author, you know, doesn't claim to be authentic. I mean, this is a fictional book, right. and uh, but it has brought up a lot of interest, so I'm glad that you're going to be doing that. And, of course, Mary Magdalene will be one of those women, won't she? She will be. She will be. On Wednesday, sir, the, the capstone of the week, we'll be looking at the Marys. Okay, great. Um, tell us a little about your background and uh, how you got interested in biblical studies in the first place. Um, in another life, in an earlier life, uh, I was a Franciscan sister, as you mentioned at the beginning. Um, I was prepared to teach high school, and I was a math teacher. When I was in the process of looking at additional studies, um, I became very interested in scripture. And so uh, I pursued, uh, basically, uh, initially it was liturgical studies, and then eventually uh, um, Scripture. What, uh, for those who don't know, what is liturgical studies? Liturgical studies basically studies um, sacraments, the mass, things that have to do with common worship of, of folks in the church. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I pursued that uh, degree at Collegeville in Minnesota and uh, then later on did the, the biblical studies at Marquette. And uh, I think one of, the, one of the really motivating factors for me in choosing scripture studies rather than some other area of theology was uh, the fact that I myself was able to spend six weeks in a summer session in Israel, in the Holy Land, uh, visiting the places, the sites that are, are biblical and uh, understanding the, the scriptures in context. And uh, so for me, it was a natural uh, jumping off point then to, to go into scripture studies. It might be important for those who are not uh, currently involved with church or with their own religion. Uh, what has been your experience, Joanne, 
how has it changed you in studying this by just reading the Bible, for instance? What does it do to you? What, what are the benefits that can be derived from reading Scripture? For me, uh, much of the, the benefit is guidance and inspiration in terms of finding people, finding folks, real life folks who uh, can, can give me a way to live. Uh, um, for example, this summer session looking at women in scripture as a woman myself, looking to other women who, who were very human and uh, who wanted to be women of holiness, who wanted to be holy, in some way wanted to be connected with God, with the divine. And uh, for me, uh, I think all of us need, need inspiration, inspiring characters. And for me, I f have found that myself personally with many of the women in Scripture. Yeah, it's, it's true for me, too. I, I, I was amazed at some of the things that I've, I've read in there. I always kid when I says, you know, I tell everyone, oh, you haven't read the book of Judith? You know, it's like, you know, and, and for those who have, those of us who have read it, of course, we'll, we'll smile and say, you know, I mean, some of these books are actually kind of, you know, they're, they're kind of racy, or they would be uh, the, the plot for a, uh, a Hollywood movie, wouldn't that's they? That's right. And soap yeah. operas, even. So, yeah, yes. that's yeah. true. There's a lot, lot more than meets the eye, isn't that's there? That's right. That's right. Yeah. Tell us some of uh, the women that you'll be covering this week. We mentioned Mary Magdala on, on Wednesday, and this mm -hmm. will run from Sunday night through Friday, typically. Uh, what are some of the other women that you uh, plan to cover, and, and why you chose those women? Okay. Um, Sunday evening will basically be an overview of the week and of the topic, mm -hmm. and then Monday and Tuesday we'll look at some of the women of the Old Testament or Hebrew scriptures, particularly looking at women like some of the matriarchs like uh, Sarah, Rebecca, um, Leah, Rachel, and so on, uh, looking at some of the women heroes of the uh, Israelite people like Judith, whom you mentioned, like Deborah, the judge, um, Esther, the queen. Um, perhaps we'll even take a look at wisdom as a, a feminine character and uh, see how that uh, can, can inspire us. That's uh, right. The Bible does say she there, doesn't it? The Bible she? says she, yes. Wisdom Sophia. as she, right. Sophie. That's wonderful. Right. I always like that. I don't know yes. why. Yes, yes. Yeah. And then Wednesday we'll, be, we'll look at Mary, the mother of Jesus, Mary of Magdala, Mary of Bethany, some of the other Marys. And then Thursday. Uh, yes, Thursday and Friday we'll look at women, other women in the New Testament, uh, concluding on Friday with women that we find uh, doing ministry in the church, like Phoebe and Lydia, uh, women whom we meet either in Paul's writings or in the Acts of the Apostles. Mm -hmm. And I probably shouldn't do this, but when you mentioned today this brand new saint, this woman who is a named saint, introduce the people to her. You told me for the first time here on the set, who is this brand new woman saint and what, what did you hear just recently about her? Uh, her name is Gianna, St. Yeah. Gianna. She's a woman from Milan. Uh, was modern woman. I mean, she modern just, woman. Yeah, Died did, 40 years ago. Yeah. She was not quite 40 herself at the time. Yeah. Uh, was a professional woman. She was a physician. Um, also, a, a, clearly a lay woman. Uh, right. Married. A mother of children. Uh, so a wonderful model for women today. Um, and her, she was just canonized on, on May 16th. And uh, for me, just a very, very moving experience to be present for that canonization, particularly seeing um, her husband and children meeting the Pope after the canonization mass was just very, very moving. Yeah, I can imagine. I, I, that's never, I don't know if that's happened before or maybe not I, recently anyhow. Yes. But yes. Uh, yeah, so there, and, and tell them why, why these women and the women that we're going to study are saints. What is it? What, what do we benefit from uh, focusing on, or contemplating, or reflecting on on saints? What, what's the benefit to us for that? For me, it's looking to them as models. In some way, they are a model of being Christians, uh, Christian women, Christian because we're looking particularly at women, um, either Christian or um, if we're looking at Old Testament women, women who were, who were women uh, in our ancestry of faith, our faith yeah. ancestry. Uh, somebody to show us how, how it is to be holy and, and how we can be that in, in a modern world. Yeah. Uh, in a world touched with, with evil and frustration and violence, uh, but also a world that, that has much that is good in it. Yeah, I noticed that. I get the, 
on the internet, I get the saint of the day, mm -hmm. you know, every day. And I notice that they're, they're different from different countries and different times. And, but that's the one thing they seem to have in common is they're, they're there for, to inspire us because they went through usually greater challenges than we do, uh, typically. That's uh, right. and, and then how to, you know, when you are challenged to, how to, how to, to rise to that challenge and how to overcome it. That's right. That's right. Because we do, we all need somebody to to yeah. tell us it is okay. We can we can make it. Um, rejoice in in the great things that are happening in our lives. Mm -hmm. Somebody to to uh, lead us along. That yeah, way. and you point out this this uh, Catholic woman's devotional Bible. I hadn't heard of that before. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Here, I'll hold it up just for a second, if you can see it. What what is the benefit, or tell us the difference here? Mm -hmm. uh, about a, a, a Bible designed spe especially for Catholic women. What is the? Uh, what have you benefited from it? Right. It's a uh, a devotional Bible because it helps with our own spiritual meditation, our own spiritual growth, and it does that both by giving us the the words of Scripture. And, and this particular version is available in either the new RSV. Uh, translation or the New American Bible translation. But in addition to that, it includes meditations that feature some of the women of the scriptures. Uh. So there, there are sometimes guided meditations, there's background information about the woman, about her times, mm -hmm. uh, questions that might help us to apply the questions that these women asked uh, or ways in which they lived out their spirituality. Uh, questions that we can apply then to our own lives. Yeah, I know I meet people all the time who are alienated. Uh, uh, they'll say organized religion like it's a dirty word or mm -hmm. something that there's no benefit to them. And you and I know that's not the case. What advice would you have for those people? I mean, you've been studying scripture and, and you know the benefits of the church as well as the challenges. What, what advice would you have for those people out there, women particularly, in, in their lives, uh, what, what is the benefit of trying to, to invest in their spiritual life? Well, we clearly are beings created with a spirit as well as, as bodies and minds. And uh, from my perspective, certainly, um, to, to uh, enhance, to do what we can to enhance not only our, our intellectual growth, but also mm -hmm. our spiritual growth is so important. Um, we look you know to our world in which there are so many troubles and people who lack hope and i believe that when we we go to something like the scriptures we um we find particularly models sometimes there are words that inspire us but a lot of times it's the people i think who inspire us if we look to our own lives there are people who inspire us to to be better, to be you know the greatest person that we can be, with our own gifts and talents and weaknesses, and uh, so I guess for myself, that's the kind of advice I would give: is is be open to uh, to letting our our spirits be touched as well as our minds, because we are also people with minds, and so um, as related to the the uh, week of spirituality, the Spirituality Institute, uh, I would say there are two, two main focuses there for me. Uh, it's exploration and inspiration, exploring with our minds uh, some of the women of the scriptures and their lives and their struggles and their, their joys, but also then being inspired, letting our hearts be moved by their example. Yeah, I know. Last, last year, as I said, that week of Mary was actually very inspiring. And, and so we're, we are talking with uh, Dr. Joanne DuPont Sandoval, and, and uh, who's teaching at the Institute for Spirituality, and we want to encourage you to go to that website if you can. It's at www.SantaFeInstituteForSpirituality or sfis.org. That's www.sfis.org, or give them a call at area code 505-473-6390, and find out what uh, programming is going to be coming up in the near future if you're just seeing it for the first time. Um, so why is it, Joanne, that you come back year after year and give of yourself so liberally? Uh, what uh, what is it? What do you get out of teaching mm. this stuff? Well, I was thinking it, partly it is it is selfish. It's what I get out of it as well. Uh, hopefully, I'm able to help other folks to to explore and be inspired. But also, uh, I am always moved by the people who come. Mm -hmm. uh, their own stories that they share, their own struggles, their own questions, um, are things that 
enliven my own faith as well. Um, the interaction that happens among the group who is there, that too is something that uh, inspires me. And I go away from the Institute uh, sometimes a little drained because I'm an introvert and dealing, dealing uh, with lots of folks on a, on a daily basis um, takes something from me. But clearly, I'm much more inspired by what happens. And, and, and I know that part of it is, is the working of the Holy Spirit in, in the midst of that. It's, it's the holy that works among the group gathered. Yeah. Well, speaking from one who's been in the audience every year for 18 years, I keep coming back for that for that reason. It's a great place to come and get fed and get nourished on this on this other level. And it's it's one of the things that people forget to do. They for, they they take time for their work life, their family life, their social life, but they don't often take time for their community and spiritual life. And and that's what I have benefited over the years being able to do that and to meet people like you that come and share. Uh, it's like a little bit of a little taste of seminary or something. You go off, or in, in some ways like a retreat where you dedicate either your part of your day or your week or summer to go and spend some time apart and to nourish yourself on another level somehow that then comes out and pays dividends uh, throughout the year just in your everyday life. And, and learning new things, too, has been a blessing. Um, is there much difference in your experience? I mean, most of the Old Testament were obviously Jewish and of the different persuasions there. But then as we get closer to, as, as you mentioned, this woman who was just made a saint, uh, tell us how has, how has women's perspective, say, of spirituality changed over the years or our perspective of women from a spiritual perspective? I think one of the changes that I see happening is that women are clearly recognized as spiritual beings, uh, as, as people who are just like men being called to holiness, to live a life of holiness, mm -hmm. whatever that means in our particular form of life, way of living. Um, I know one of the, the uh, main thoughts that came out of my dissertation work is that women were not directly addressed in the Holiness Code in this, this section of chapters of, of law code for the Israelite people in ancient times. Mm -hmm. uh, women were not addressed directly. They were addressed to uh, be holy via their husbands or their, their fathers, their mm -hmm. brothers. Uh, but as we continue to see uh, things develop through the scriptures, more and more we're recognizing how women themselves are called. And clearly Jesus reached out to women and uh, broke many of the, the social mores of his day by reaching out to women. I mean, the, the typical uh, example is the Jesus meeting the woman at the well, the Samaritan woman. To speak to a woman in public, and yeah. particularly a Samaritan woman, was you know, breaking many taboos, and many no-nos in, in that day and time. Um, but women recognized as beings, spiritual beings in themselves, who, are, who themselves are called to become greater yeah. Or one of my favorites of the woman who was caught in the act of adultery, you know, and how he uh, protected her in, in a very unique sort of way, you yeah. know, like, okay, you guys line up, get your stones, <laughs> and let's start with the ones who have no sin, shall we? And then he goes down and doodles in the dirt. I mean, it's just, it's hysterical and yet so profound at the same time. Then he, hey, where, gets up, where, where are your, all your accusers, you know? That's right. Oh, well, mm -hmm. neither do I, you know, I mean. I think of nothing else, even if you don't believe in the scriptures. I remember one time, uh, Abbot David Garrett's the first abbot at the monastery in Pecos, he says, you know, it's such a great story that it had to make it up if it wasn't true. And I love that because what it did for me, whatever skepticism I had within myself was being honored mm -hmm. indirectly. Because even if you don't believe it, the story still has value for, for us now. Right, and not just for women, yeah. for men as well. Both, yeah, yes. of course. You know, yes. how to act, how not to act, uh, what to watch out for, or how, what, if you do this, this will benefit you. It really is sort of the gift. If you give somebody a Bible, it's a gift that keeps on giving, isn't it? That's right, that's you know, right. The more you read it, the more you get out of it. Exactly, you yes. Know, I can only watch uh, reruns of Leave it to Beaver <laughs> so often, you know, or some television so often, but I notice when I read scripture, I'm, I'm constantly getting something. Right, yeah. right. Um, we've got about 10 minutes left. I wanted to go over it. Is there anyone else? Did we mention everybody that's going to be covered this summer? Um, oh, I don't think we mentioned them all. There's no. so, so many so women. So many, huh? 
so many to choose from. Um, oh, how about the woman with the hemorrhage? I love that one. You know, just just a couple of those. The relationship with Jesus to women is really extraordinary. Yes. Yes. Um, one of the we know that there are four gospels, and one of the stories that we find in uh, one of the gospels, oh. father whose daughter is dying calls Jesus to come, and. Uh, in the midst of that story, we find another story, a woman who has a hemorrhage who's been, who's been bleeding for many, many years. Mm -hmm. And she feels if she can only just touch the hem of Jesus' garment. Yeah. She doesn't even need to be touched by him or to touch him, but just something that's connected to him. Her faith is so deep, she believes she will be healed. And in fact, she is. Um, and then Jesus goes on to heal this, uh, yeah. or to raise back to life this 12-year-old girl. So we yeah. get kind of a juxtaposition of yeah. the younger, the older woman, um, this woman who's been, who's been bleeding for many, many years. And and there's so many layers of meaning there as well. That's you know, true. bleeding in the Jewish um, uh, society and the laws at that time, you didn't touch anyone who was bleeding. That was another social mm -hmm. taboo. And to be touched by someone who, mm -hmm. who was bleeding was, uh, yeah. you would become contaminated. And right. Jesus allows himself to be contaminated. Yes. Um, and who he so hangs out with all the time. But, and, and today, Jesus is with us today. I mean, these things are not so rare even today. We often hear of people just through their faith or really mostly just removing the blocks. Mm -hmm. so, I mean, faith to me is almost just removing the blocks from receiving that healing can t and does take place today, doesn't it? It does, it does. And I, I like that. That's a great, great uh, image to use, moving the, the blocks. Yeah, just to get away. Or one of my favorites is the one, the scraps from the table mm -hmm. story. When the woman comes up, give them a little flavor of that because that still resonates with me. I love that story too. That she's uh, the woman is called either the Canaanite woman or the Syrophoenician woman, depending yeah. upon which gospel writer you read. And uh, this woman is very bold. She's very bold in her faith because she challenges Jesus. And uh, she has a daughter who is ill. She comes to Jesus and asks him if, if uh, Jesus will heal her daughter. And Jesus says, I came for the Jews. Uh, I came for the people of Israel. And she obviously is not one, a member of, of those people. And she says, but even the dogs get the scraps from the table. Um, so. In other words, you can you can reach out to some of us as well, some of us outsiders, yeah. and uh, I think she challenges Jesus in a way that makes him reflect on, ah, oh, maybe my ministry is broader than what I had yeah. thought just to the people of Israel, yeah. and uh, and he does, he heals her daughter. Yeah, I mean it's almost like he's blowing her off, you mm -hmm. know, right. and and yet and then she just nails him, and right. and he just. And, and then it just like melts, you right. know, it's almost like, so like his mother, who he doesn't want to go out to do, you know, hey, my time's not now, and she blows him off and just, and, and outs him in a way. And then he does, you know, that first one of, it's funny that the miracles start at a wedding party, you know, they're out of wine. And, you know, he says, what's it to me? You know, I love that if you read between the lines and realize, you know, that sounds a lot like me or like mm -hmm. us. That's and, right. but by, again, going in that spiritual direction, we overcome our own shortcomings, our own narrow-mindedness. And it, it, that's why it's such a great story. Yes, you know? yes, yes. It's amazing. Challenges us to be, to ourselves, become more inclusive. Yeah. Right? I think it's important once in a while to think, hey, what do I get out of this? You know, what, what, what am I getting out of religion, for instance? I mean, if, here's the, truly the case. If you're not getting something out of it, what are you doing there? You know, don't keep going somewhere be, if you're not getting fed, if you're not doing what you need to do for yourself. It, I think religion is really for you. It's not you here for religion. I mean, religion is designed right. to support you in your spiritual life. Because whether you're religious or not, you have a spiritual life. That's right. And you, religion is designed to support that and to feed that and nourish it. And that's what I love about today. We now have de facto freedom of religion, at least in this country. There's no penalties if you practice or don't practice. But if you do, you and I know the benefits to yourself. It's all about how you really give and benefit yourself by doing this sort of stuff. So that's, I think that's why the Institute for Spirituality is there to help feed you so that you can go out and be nourished and share, share that with other people. 
That's right, yes, because it's, it's not just one way. It's, it's, yes, clearly we're being fed, mm -hmm. but then we're, part of being fed is, is going out and feeding others as well. Yeah, sharing the yeah. good news, right. you know, right. and it really is. Well, we've only got a few uh, minutes left, um, so I just want to encourage people at home. We've had a conversation today with Dr. Joanne dupont Sandoval, who teaches at the Institute for Spirituality at the College of Santa Fe. And uh, that's almost every summer and some other times as well. So I want you to go to the website at www.sfis, Santa Fe Institute for Spirituality, sfis.org, or give a call over there to area code 505-473-6390. Find out what's going on. And if you're not in this area or you have other place to go, take some time out for your spiritual life. Go on retreat. Uh, call up the local church if you don't have a faith community that you're a part of, uh, come to the Institute for Spirituality or find one. Because as you've heard it say in scripture, if you don't seek, you're not going to find. If you don't knock, it won't be open to you. And if you don't ask, it won't receive. So those are three conditions preceding for you to do before you're going to get anything and get anywhere. Otherwise, it's just ashes to ashes and dust to dust, right, Joanne? That's right. That's right. <laughs> okay. Any final thoughts before we go? Well, just I'd like to welcome folks, uh, anybody who has uh, an opportunity to uh, come either morning, evening, uh, or both. Mm -hmm. uh, you're certainly welcome to come and explore together with us some of the, the stories of the women in Scripture and um, be inspired and, and be an inspiration to the rest of us as well. That's true. It's an instant community, it seems like. Yes. Okay, well, listen, I think we've just about run out of time, so we want to encourage you in your spiritual life uh, in whatever circumstances you're in. Um, you don't have to be Catholic to come to the Institute for Spirituality. Anyone is welcome. And so I would encourage you to come. Money won't keep you out. Uh, strictly donation. We'd love to have you. They've got some housing there, low-cost housing at the student dorms at the College of Santa Fe. Or, you know, if some place is closer or more convenient for you, take some time for your spiritual life. So we want to encourage you in that. Uh, please watch the credits. If you have any comments for us, please contact us. Let us know. Uh, we'd love to hear from you. So. On behalf of Dr. Joanne and myself, we want to thank you for viewing, and stay tuned next week at this time for another program on spirituality.